Nickelodeon made a name for themselves in the 90s with offbeat comedic cartoons like Ren and Stimpy, Rocco's Modern Life, Our Real Monsters, and Cat Dog. And one Nick animated show I've long had a fondness for that sits alongside them in wackiness is The Angry Beavers. Revisiting the series again recently, I can understand why, as creator Mitch Schauer and the writers came up with a lot of inventive scenarios and took the show in some interesting comedic directions. Before pitching Angry Beavers to Nickelodeon, Schauer held several animation jobs at various studios. He was a storyboard artist and character designer in a number of shows for Hanna Barbera and Film Roman. Some of his most notable credits included being a story director, character designer, and producer on The Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, a character designer and producer on Bobby's World, and he directed a number of episodes of Garfield and Friends. Around 1994, he pitched the concept for a show about two Beaver Brothers to Nickelodeon. This led to the creation of a pilot, which did not stray too far from what the series ended up being. The most notable differences are that the two Beavers looked a lot more alike, and Mitchell Whitfield voiced one of them. However, Nickelodeon turned the show down, and Shower went on to become a producer on the first season of Freakazoid, winning an Emmy as a result. Eventually, Nick called him back and greenlit the Angry Beavers. The premise of the series is fairly simple, as we watch the escapades of two beavers named Norbit and Daggett. While Norbit fancies himself as the more sophisticated of the two, and Daggett is more eccentric, both of them are responsible for the wacky shenanigans that occur. What's great about Angry Beavers is that the writers tried really hard not to stick to a formula. They don't tell the same story twice, even when revisiting certain characters or running jokes. You never know what you're going to get before watching an episode, which allowed it to stay fresh and in string through the four seasons. They were not afraid to experiment or go in truly outlandish directions, but the characters still stay true to themselves. One of the most unique things about the show was the presentation of the dialogue. While scripts were written, voice actors Nick Bakai and Richard Horvitz were given free reign to improvise. They recorded their lines together, and very commonly overlapped on top of each other, which gave the series a unique feeling among animated shows at the time. The Beavers also had their own manner of speaking, often pronouncing words differently, which further allowed these characters to stand out. Bakai's voice will be very familiar to anyone who has seen Sabrina the Teenage Witch, as he provided the voice of Salem on the popular sitcom, as well as the late 90s animated series. Richard Horvitz, meanwhile, would go on to voice the alien Zim on another Nickelodeon cartoon, Invader Zim. Shower and the writers took inspiration from many things when coming up with ideas. Their research into the habits of real beavers led to a number of episodes. The importance of beavers needing to chew on wood and their construction abilities were pivotal to some of the storylines. However, other times the episodes went down some truly outlandish avenues. Shower also populated the forest with plenty of distinct characters. There are a pair of scientists who frequently get in the beaver's way, and were an example of the show not repeating itself. There's an episode where the scientists confuse Dag for an endangered species, while another has them taking a fantastic voyage-style trip inside of Dag. One storyline even has the head scientist turning into a beaver himself. There's also a running arc where Dag pretends to be a superhero, much to Norm's annoyance. Again, any time they revisited Muscular Beaver, the scenario often played out differently. There's an episode where the scientists even try to enlist the beaver's superhero alter egos. Among the other characters are Norb's on-again, off-again love interest, Tree Flower, the super-relaxed Barry Bear, and Trucky, a shrew who loves driving his big rig. They also have a friend named Stumpy, who is a tree stump the beavers believe has a personality. My favorite supporting character is Bing, a lizard who is extremely excitable and hyper. Even though the beavers and other animals are shown to be slightly annoyed by him, I find Bing to be quite lovable and hilarious. As I said, Shower and his team were not afraid to go bonkers with the episodes and storylines they devised. There's a special Halloween episode when Norb and Dag wind up in a 1950s science fiction horror B-movie. In another episode, the dam gets overrun by wolverines, and the beavers attempt to get out without making a sound. That's right, an episode almost entirely without dialogue, and it's really cleverly done. One episode is designed and narrated in the style of Dr. Seuss when they're visited by a yak in the sack. There's an episode where all the dialogue is in Spanish, and another that's a parody of the 70s television show Startsky and Hutch. These are all great episodes that showcase the imagination of the Angry Beavers crew, and the unpredictability of the series played a role in the show becoming a hit for Nickelodeon. Among the writers who wrote several episodes of Angry Beavers were the pair of John Requois and Glenn Ficarra. They actually got their first credits on the show, and since then they worked on the screenplays for hit films like Cats and Dogs, Bad Santa, and most recently, Jungle Cruise. They've also directed movies like I Love You, Philip Morris, and Crazy Stupid Love. 
Meanwhile, a director on many of the episodes was Robert Hughes, who later became a director and songwriter for Phineas and Ferb. One of the most infamous episodes of The Angry Beavers was one that was not even finished. Titled Bye Bye Beavers, this was supposed to be the series finale. In it, Norb would have informed Dag that they are actually cartoon characters, and their show had been cancelled. It was an extremely meta concept, and came very close to being made, as a script was written, storyboards were drawn, and Bakai and Horvitz had recorded the dialogue. However, according to Shower, one of the higher-ups in Nickelodeon became upset at him because she thought he was trying to kill off the Beavers, which obviously was not his intention, but the decision was ultimately made not to end Angry Beavers that way. You can actually find a few of the storyboards and audio of the actors reading the script online, and it's really funny. The cartoon being over, guys, rerun it over and over, and they make lots of well-deserved money. Which they share with the people who made the cartoon, right? <laughs> right. The last thing I want to talk about is the DVD set. Shout Factory did a really nice job of packaging the episodes together, but there are sadly no bonus features. There's not that much information about the making of the show outside of a few podcast interviews with Mitch Shower and other tidbits, so it would have been nice to include a few retrospective documentaries, plus the original pilot. They also could have taken the Bye Bye Beavers recording and combined it with the completed storyboards as a way to finally bring that episode to life. Oh well, it was still wonderful to revisit the Angry Beavers and appreciate it anew. The team behind the series did a lot of inventive, clever, and funny things with these characters, and it seemed like the sky was the limit. Throw in the fantastic comedic chemistry between Nick Bakai and Richard Horvitz, and you get a really entertaining series. Angry Beavers definitely ranks up there as one of my favorite Nicktoons, and I want to thank Mitch Shower and the rest of the production team for introducing us to Norbit and Daggett and their crazy adventures. See you next time.